December 25th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Zechariah chapters 5 and 6 from the Old Testament. Then I turned to look and there was a flying scroll. Someone asked me, what do you see? I replied, I see a flying scroll 30 feet long and 15 feet wide. The speaker went on to say, this is a curse traveling across the whole earth. For example, according to the curse, whoever steals will be removed from the community. Or on the other hand, according to the curse, whoever swears falsely will suffer the same fate. I will send it out, says the Lord who rules over all, and it will enter the house of the thief and of the person who swears falsely in my name. It will land in the middle of his house and destroy both timber and stones. After this, the angelic messenger, who had been speaking to me, went out and said, Look, see what is leaving. I asked, What is it? And he replied, It is a basket for measuring grain that is moving away from here. Moreover, he said, This is their eye throughout all the earth. Then a round lead cover was raised up, revealing a woman sitting inside the basket. He then said, This woman represents wickedness. And he pushed her down into the basket and placed the lead cover on top. Then I looked again and saw two women going forth with the wind in their wings. They had wings like those of a stork, and they lifted up the basket between the earth and the sky. I asked the messenger who was speaking to me, Where are they taking the basket? He replied, To build a temple for her in the land of Babylonia. When it is finished, she will be placed there in her own residence. Once more I looked, and this time I saw four chariots emerging from between two mountains of bronze. Harnessed to the first chariot were red horses, to the second black horses, to the third white horses, and to the four spotted horses, all of them strong. Then I asked the angelic messenger who was speaking with me, What are these, sir? The messenger replied, these are the four spirits of heaven that have been presenting themselves before the Lord of all the earth. The chariots with the black horses is going to the north country and the white ones are going after them. But the spotted ones are going to the south country. All these strong ones are scattering. They have sought permission to go and walk about over the earth. The Lord had said, go walk about over the earth. So they are doing so. Then he cried out to me, Look, the ones going to the Northland have brought me peace about the Northland. The word of the Lord came to me as follows. Choose some people from among the exiles, namely Heldai, Tobijah, and Jediah, all of whom have come from Babylon. And when you have done so, go to the house of Josiah, son of Zephaniah. Then take some silver and gold to make a crown and set it on the head of Joshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest. Then say to him, The Lord who rules over all says, Look, here is the man whose name is Branch, who will sprout up from his place and build the temple of the Lord. Indeed, he will build the temple of the Lord, and he will be clothed in splendor, sitting as king on his throne. Moreover, there will be a priest with him on his throne, and they will see eye to eye on everything. The crown will then be turned over to Helam, Tobijah, Jedediah, and Hen, son of Zephaniah, as a memorial in the temple of the Lord. Then those who are far away will come and build the temple of the Lord, so that you may know that the Lord, who rules over all, has sent me to you. This will all come to pass if you completely obey the voice of the Lord your God. God, when you're talking about uh, the woman representing wickedness, the one who is in a basket that's getting pushed down by the angel, we're not quite sure why it's a woman. Now, I'm sure if you guys could joke about why it's a woman, but uh, it possibly has to do with the deities uh, that they worship back then, the goddesses, uh, Asherah possibly. Uh, it could also have to do with the foreign women at that time. A lot of your people were marrying foreign women even though you told them not to and the foreign women were leading these men's hearts away away from you uh, we see this most predominantly with solomon where at the end of his life he was completely led away because of all the foreign wives he had met so we're not really 
sure where this part comes from, but probably the most important part is the fact that she is contained in something, in this case a basket, and then she has something put on her so that she can't get out, a 75 pound-ish weight on the top, uh, so that she is still in existence, wickedness is still in existence, but it's contained. I think this was a really good reminder for Christians, especially as persecution starts to happen more and more, oppression of the Christian, Christian message starts to happen more and more, that we need to remember you are in charge, you are in control, even over Satan. I think, I think sometimes we forget that. Sometimes in, when we're worrying and when we're agitated and when we're flustered, about things that have happened in our own life, things that are happening on the news, things that are happening around the world. We, a lot of times, are that way because a, a sense of loss of control. We obviously don't want evil to happen in this world. We don't want people to be murdered. We don't want them to be raped. We don't want them to lose their jobs. We don't want them to get divorces. We don't want all of these things to happen, but they do. And we should, of course, respond to them accordingly with sadness and, and hurt and hopefully definitely in prayer and fully realizing that you are in control of those situations that the ultimate outcome will be what you want it to be and it will be for your glory I, I, I saw something online that's kind of the backlash of this I saw a commentary by a pastor uh, and he was responding to something that happened in the news and his basic take on it was, yeah, Christians are being persecuted in this story in the news, but this is not where our fight is. Our fight is coming. It's going to get bigger and that's where we need to put our energy. This is not our fight. This is something little and it will blow over. I have to tell you, I was incredibly angry at his response. Uh, so were a lot of other people, according to what happened in social media. I truly believe that we are we are called to that fight constantly and we have to remember that you are in control of those situations yes in righteous indignation and, and frustration we can voice through using the Bible uh, as our basis but we have to realize that you're in control and it almost feels like he forgot that you're in control uh, if it's up to us then we would have to pick and choose our battles right uh, we would have to choose our fights because we would become exhausted, which was part of his reasoning in there. But with you, I know that all things are possible. With you, I know that I will have strength. With you, I know that when I'm weary, you will give me rest and you will take on anything that I need to be doing at that time. So his response was almost like kind of a backlash of, uh, yeah, so trust God so much that you don't really need to worry about this one. And I, you know me, like I fully believe in turning our lives over to you. I fully believe in trusting you. I don't always get that right, but I fully believe in that. So I was really surprised at his response to the wickedness that was happening in the media towards Christians. So God, please help us with this. Help us understand that wickedness will reign on this earth until your son comes back. And the Bible is very clear about that. Please help us with discernment in choosing the right response to wickedness. There is righteous anger, but we rarely use it. Instead, we use a lot of human emotions, frustration, jealousy, envy, that are definitely not fruits of the Spirit. God, allow us to respond to wickedness in the way that you want us to, fully knowing in our hearts that you're in control, and fully understanding that you know everything that's going on with that wickedness, and that ultimately it will be moved into your glory. But for right now, teach us how to respond correctly to it with loving, compassion, strict Christian boundaries, and support and understanding of biblical.